How's it going everybody? My name is Absalom and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be covering the complete Easter egg guide for the Outbreak Part 2 main Easter egg. This is going to include all of the spawn locations for every single step. All steps are going to be timestamped below. And if you're new here, if you're enjoying this, I would really appreciate if you could hit that subscribe button. But let's get right into this with the loadout that I recommend for this Easter egg and then we'll get to step one. All right, so I would recommend the AMP 63 pistols if you have them maxed out so you can use the dual hit option. But if you don't have those, then the M16 is what I'd recommend um, because even the stock version of that gun is really good. So both of these are what I'd recommend. If you don't have any of them leveled up, use the M16 and you'll be just fine. All right, so here's a look at the attachments for both of these guns as I'm talking, but let's take a look at the field upgrades. So I use Frenzied Guard and I also use Ether Shroud. I personally have tried both of these at this point and Frenzied Guard served me a little bit better, so I'd recommend that over Ether Shroud. Um, however, honestly, you're not gonna really be using your field upgrade uh, to actually beat the boss. So use whatever you like the most and what you're comfortable with and that will be just fine. So to summarize, the AMP 63 pistols or the M16 and then Frenzied Guard or Ether Shroud is my top loadout. All right, so step one of this Easter egg is to get to world three. And I would recommend looting as much as you can up until this point in order to get as set up as possible because on the later end of this Easter egg, you don't really have a lot of chances to stop and pack a punch and do things like that. So when you're ready on world three, you're gonna find a red rift around the map. Now there's one spawn per map and if you fail, you have to push rounds to the next map. So in a second, I'm gonna go over where all these locations are, but right now let's take a look at this step. So when you find your red rift, you wanna go through the rift and it's gonna shoot you out into the air. Now on your first time, I'd recommend pulling your chute the second you spawn in because you have to find this rift and then line yourself up. And if you don't know where to look, it's gonna be a little bit hard and you might miss the rift. And like I said, if you fail, you have to go to the next world and that's gonna waste a lot of time and also make this harder. But what you're trying to do is find the little red rift that's floating in the air, line yourself up and then just fly into the orb and it'll teleport you if you've done it correctly. And you're gonna do this three times and on the fourth time when you spawn back out of the portal, it's actually going to stop with the rifts and then spawn in a beacon listening device. So another little tip on this step is that it's always gonna line you up with wherever the next portal is. So you don't have to worry about looking all around or looking to your left or right. It's always gonna be directly in front of you. However, I will mention that on certain maps like Alpine, some of these red rifts are really hard to see. And on the third rift, it's always a little bit further away. So you have to make sure that you just take your time. And like I said, pull your shoot as soon as you came, uh, spawn in. So that's gonna be the easiest way to do it. But as you can see on my third one, this one's a lot further away. So once you go through the rift, like I said, it's going to spawn in a beacon listening device and it's going to look like a meteor crashing to earth or like Zetsubo no Shima's gears. So what you're looking for is the smoke trail and you're going to follow it to the ground and then you'll be able to pick it up. But if you don't see where it lands, it doesn't matter because there's a giant golden beam of light telling you where it landed. It's too bad that Zetsubo gears didn't have this when we were doing that. But once you find it on the ground, go ahead and pick it up and then make your way to the beacon after doing the main objective, and you'll be able to insert it and respond just like you did in part one of this Easter egg. All right, now before I get to that part, let's go over all the rift locations. Like I said, there's one per map. So this is the Alpine location. It's gonna be over here on the right side of the map on the cliffs, and you'll see it right here on the cliff side, on Dead Man's Cliff. All right, moving on to zoo, it's gonna be inside of the zoo perimeter, and it's gonna be in the wolf pen, or the wolf exhibit, and it's gonna be over here in this little cave in the dead center of their pen. The next one is Duga. It's gonna be on the top portion of the map next to the crafting table. And it's gonna be in this little silo thing, drop down and go inside of the bunker. And then it's gonna be on the left over here in this doorway. The next map is going to be Golova. And this one is going to be, as you saw earlier, in the top of the church. And it's just go all the way up the top. There's a doorway and you'll see it right there. So this is on the bottom side of the map. And last but not least, Ruka, it's going to be next to Pack-A-Punch um, on the left side of the map right here in the shack out behind Pack-A-Punch, um, just in the center of this house. And there isn't one on Sanatorium because that is where the Easter egg takes place. So if you go on that map, you will just have to unfortunately push rounds or restart. So now that we're back and we're ready to hit the beacon device, we can move on uh, by responding using our beacon listening device we got out of the rift. So go ahead and hit the respond button and then you can teleport to the next world. All right, once you teleport to Sanatorium, which it will be mandatory, you are going to find the helicopter that has been downed. This is going to be out here on the left side of the map next to this little shack where the previous Easter egg had a monkey location, if you remember that. So you'll find this little radio hanging outside of the uh, helicopter and it's going to start a defense. So once you kill all the zombies, then you can go ahead and come back to that radio and activate it, but you will have to actually clear the horde of zombies that spawns in. 
Now, like I said, once you're done with the horde, come back and activate the radio and you're gonna get a message or a prompt to move on to the next step. And that will complete the helicopter portion of this Easter egg. All right, for this step, you are finding the red ethereal orb, which is different than the normal ethereal orbs. And there's gonna be three spawns around the map, which I will cover in just a moment. But to make this easy, you wanna put a marker down on the bridge. That way you can face that marker because this orb is a directional orb. So whichever way you're facing and you shoot it, that's the way the orb moves. And if you do this wrong, you can get stuck in a never ending cycle of teleports back and forth to different locations. And so to make this easy, face the bridge and shoot it and then move it a couple different times. Now I'm gonna cover all three locations on where this can spawn, but first I'm gonna show you how this works and that way you can uh, understand it and then we'll go over the locations. So basically it's gonna take about two to three uh, different times of shooting it to get it to the bridge, depending on where you're at. But whenever it stops, just like a normal ethereal orb, you are gonna shoot it, but make sure that you are facing the bridge, like I said, and then it'll keep teleporting. All right, so if you've done it correctly, it should stop on top of the rover that is on the bridge, and that way you know that you are on to the next step. But we're not quite done with this because in order to get the orb into the rover, we actually have to find the blue bunny from the mystery box. So now let's move on to the next step of this Easter egg. So one of the orbs can spawn in the sanatorium building on the second floor up. There is a swimming pool, and it's actually going to be in the dead center of the swimming pool right here in the middle. So if it's not there, then let's move on to the next location. The next possible spawn is gonna be at the bathhouse on the bottom side of the map, right beside the crafting table, and it's going to be on the roof. It's gonna be very obvious if it's up there, um, and if it is, the easiest way to get up there if you don't have a long range weapon is to take the jump pad right here and then parachute down on top of the roof. But most likely you should be able to shoot it from the ground so you won't have to worry about that. All right, and the third location is going to be at the top of the map right here, the very topmost building, and it's gonna be on the roof. I believe this is called maintenance, and it is gonna be right there like you see in my game. All right, so once your orb is on top of the rover, like I said, now we need to find the blue bunny. So what you need to do is go to one of the three different box spawns and find the box that is broken that has the bunny sitting on top. And once you interact with the bunny, then what you have to do is survive a lockdown or a defense step. And it's only about 20 zombies or so, so it's not too bad. And once that's over, then you can go ahead and pick up the bunny, which is going to be a field upgrade temporarily. And what you need to do is, is walk your way back to the rover that is on the bridge, and then go ahead and place the bunny in the back of the rover. All right, so before I move on, let's take a look at the box spawns. There's only three. The first one is on the bottom left corner of the map where the black parking lot is on the bottom. And it's gonna be right here against the wall. The next spawn is gonna be on the roof of the sanatorium building, just on the edge of the roof, um, facing towards the bridge. And the next and last spawn for the box is going to be over here in the top uh, corner of the map, and it's gonna be over here in this circle area of the map, and it's gonna be right here against this wall. All right, so let's move on to the next step. So now that you've put your bunny in the rover and the ethereal orb is now inside the rover, there's gonna be a radio that spawns on the ground right here, so go ahead and interact with that. And you're gonna to listen to some quotes and then you'll be able to interact with the rover and actually start the escort mission that is going to be guided throughout the storm. Now this step works pretty much like the Tag Your Toten final step, if you're familiar with that, but if not, it's just basically a slow escort with a dome around you and you cannot leave the dome without dying. So this was really simple in solo. It's a little bit more challenging in co-op, um, which is to be expected, but this one was a lot easier in solo. So just walk it along and just shoot anything like Tempest and Manglers and Megatons um, as fast as you can. And then the rest of it, uh, you can just kind of run around in circles in the dome and you should be just fine. Um, these pistols, this is where they shine. This makes it so easy. Um, but you're just gonna walk it along for about two or three minutes and if it gets hit by a Tempest, it will stop the rover and you have to wait for it to recharge. Um, but otherwise, it just escorts you to the monument that is on the like top left of the map. So just walk it along and once you get to the monument, the rover will stop. All right, so moving on to the next step, the monument is gonna be right here beside the rover. There's going to be a star objective telling you where to go, but just in case, I'll show you, just go up these stairs in the monument. There's some intel right here and then you can interact with this radio. After listening to some quotes, get ready because the boss fight is about to start, which is just simply an exfil. So once you're done, then go ahead and turn to the right and run to the uh, star objective right here, which is where you exfil. And the only thing that's different than a normal exfil is that there's gonna be an Orda boss who you have to kill first because once you kill him, the enemies will stop spawning and then you'll be able to kill everything that remains. So here's the exact way I do this in solo. It is a lot, lot easier if you do this exact method. So what I do is I just start running a counterclockwise circle, which I know shocker in the zombies community. But once you have all the zombies hoarded up, they actually stop spawning and you're able to just run a circle around Orda shooting him at your will. So here's a look unedited at how I'm doing that. 
And now that you can see, I have all the zombies behind me. So now every time I get a chance, I turn and I shoot Orta, and it's just taking health off with these pistols. So you don't have to worry about having a packed three gun. As you can see, I have a Pack-a-Punch two on solo, um, but his health is just melting with these pistols. So just keep running circles and you should be just fine. If you need ammo, kill a mimic or something, and it'll, it'll drop it. So let's skip to the end when you kill him because I just rinse and repeat this whole strategy the whole time. All right, so once you have the order uh, killed, then he's gonna despawn most of the enemies and all you have to do is turn around and shoot the last few that remain. And it's super simple with these pistols or the M16. And then once you have all the enemies done, make sure that you go ahead and board the helicopter to exfil. And that is it, that completes the main Easter egg. You'll get the sick cutscene that follows. And I have that link on my channel below. So if you wanna see that for yourself, it is linked below. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this guide. And my name is Absalom and I hope to see you in my next video.